In order to add necessary strength to the deck and cockpit structure of a carval plank boat, we add knees, which are sort of gussets or brackets that reinforce corners. They're generally concentrated where load is likely to be highest, as at the main beams in the way of the mast, cockpit structure and cabin openings, and of course in the bow where they're called breast hooks, and in the stern where they're called quarter knees. Vertically fitted knees are referred to as hanging knees. Horizontally fitted knees are referred to as lodging knees. The secret to fitting any knee is to fit one side first and then mark and trim the other side. If your approach is to take a little bit off one side then a little bit off the other, that way madness lies. If one side is straight, like the side of a deck beam, fit the knee to that side first. If both sides are curved, fit the knee to the simpler side, that is the one with the least curve and or bevel. Hanging knees under beams are best fitted to the underside of the beam first. When you're happy that the knee fits solidly on the beam with no wobbling and at the exact attitude required, generally dead plumb for hanging knees and parallel to the shear of the hull side for lodging knees, Mark the other side by scribing both sides, either a close pencil scribe if it's close, or a compass scribe if there's a bit of a gap. There'll be a bit more detail on fitting later. Your first move is to make up a template. This can be a plywood or timber template made up to a perfect fit, or simply a cardboard template that's a near perfect fit. Start with the plywood or cardboard well oversized. Mark it in pencil, cut to your lines and whittle it down to your satisfaction. Draw the shape of the inboard side freehand. Knees will always look better with the extremities well tapered, not chunky. Except for many lodging knees that have to fit against a beam. Visible knees always look better if one side is longer than the other. With hanging knees, it's always better to have the vertical leg longer than the horizontal one. With lodging knees, not so much. A few decades ago, one of my students who was a professional carpenter saw me doing this kind of uh, very loose freehand, decided he could do it better. Grabbed a uh, compass, described a, a couple of big arcs on a bit of uh, template material, intersected them with other perfect arcs, top and bottom, proudly showed it to me, expecting that uh, I'd admit it was better. Uh, I couldn't. The freehand one will always look better. The template allows you to select your timber. Knees were traditionally cut from crooks where the grain of the timber curved, mostly cut from where branches left the trunk, or with larger knees from buttress roots. Around Sydney they were mostly cut from coastal tea tree, Melaleuca quinquinerva. From my stock of big chunks felled years ago I planed a flat on two sides. then cut them over thick on the big bandsaw and ran them through the thickness planer. I had exactly enough blanks to make all of the knees that will be visible inside the cabin from tea tree and they will all be varnished. The other knees that will be hidden behind furniture will be painted so I chose to laminate them. With natural crooks becoming harder to get, I've occasionally fitted graving pieces to imperfections and even added filler blocks to get the width. I laminated a bunch of knees from silver ash with some celery top pine and some hewn pine and Tasmanian myrtle. Some of the curves would have required very thin laminates to bend around dry, which means more waste, more glue and more time. So I cut my laminates mostly around four or five millimetres thick and steam bent them on a jig. Actually, because the laminates were relatively short, I boiled them in a big tub on the kitchen stove. You can see more on steam bending in several of my other videos. After leaving them for at least 24 hours to settle down, I separated the laminates so they could dry for several days, then glued them together with epoxy then added a backing block, which can be a single block or glued up from multiple pieces. 
Here you can see the assembly line with laminated knees in different stages of completion. Laminated knees can look okay under varnish if they're made neatly and are built up from the one species of timber. I just prefer the look of traditional knees in traditional boats. And please don't laminate them from alternate contrasting timbers. They look like a barbershop sign. You can also make laminated knees from solid stock in two layers by alternating the joints. I did this for several pairs of lodging knees which are to be painted. No matter what the construction of the knees is, they all need to be fitted the same way. Here's the sequence. Fit the straight or simplest side first. Make sure you've got a good fit and then scribe the other side, either on both sides if you can, or scribe one side and measure the bevel angle. Remembering that the bevel may change from one end to the other. A bandsaw is best for cutting out knees. Offer it up again and see if there's any gaps and high spots. Trim these and when you think you're getting close, apply some coloured chalk to the landing area. Press the knee in firmly so the chalk transfers to the high spots. Trim down these high spots and repeat until the chalk marks most of the surface of that leg of the knee and the knee fits firmly in place. Knees with two relatively simple surfaces to fit against are the easiest to fit, the same as most knees in open boats. I've shown this in episode 7 of my series on traditional clinker construction, fitting out on Ian Smith Boats channel. In many situations on a decked boat, however, there are complications like having to fit around shear clamps and stringers. A really accurate template with bevels taken and marked can help, but if you want a tight fit, multiple test fits, marking with pencil and cutting to your marks is necessary. Don't try to guess it. Work to conservative pencil marks and worry it down. Most lodging knees will have to fit against three surfaces and the secret is to get the two parallel surfaces dead right first, then work on the third surface. There will usually be bevels involved, and if the surfaces are not dead parallel, the knee will push in from one way better than the other. Fit your knees in matching pairs each side of the boat. Mark the sides to be trimmed with the template, or mark and cut one and use it to mark out the other. The inside curve is best trimmed with a spindle sander or a stationary belt sander. Make sure you end up with smooth, fair curves. These will round over the visible edges. Clamp the knee exactly in place and mark where you will be drilling for fastenings. It's best to drill from the knee side out to make sure the visible fastening is located centrally. Fastenings look best if spaced fairly evenly. It's normal to have three fastenings per leg in knees of this size. I used eight gauge copper nails up to six inches or 150 millimeters where possible and quarter inch or six millimeter copper rod for longer holes. On some of the bigger knees, I used thicker rod and sometimes threaded the ends for nuts rather than peening them over. For the longer sizes, it's easy to make up your own bolts from copper rod. Knees are usually tough woods, so for square cut nails you need to drill one size less than the nail size measured across the diagonal. Do a test in an offcut. Round rod needs the exact size drilled. Both are helped by applying a bit of lanolin grease. Prime the mating surfaces with several coats of paint if they're to be painted or varnish if they'll be finished clear. Apply plenty of your chosen bedding compound, not glue, 
and drive the fastenings and fasten them off. Every peen fastening has to have the head backed up with a dolly and double check that the fastening hasn't moved during the peening process. The peening hammer should be the smallest that will do the job. Too heavy a hammer will tend to knock the fastening back out unless the dolly work is particularly solid, in which case a too heavy hammer will tend to bend the fastening within the wood. I've still got a few knees to fit around the cockpit bulkhead, but I'm not fitting that until the interior is mostly done for ease of access and light. There's more details in my book, Wooden Boat Building, the Sydney Wooden Boat School Manuals, available through the Wooden Boat Store in Maine, Boat Books in Sydney, or from www.sydneywoodenboatschool.com.au.